Good morning. Merry Christmas. We are still in the days of Christmas celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And let me also say Happy New Year. It is 2023. How does that sit with you? Yeah, we'll take it, right? Yeah. Blessed day to you. Welcome to worship. And to those of you also joining us on our live stream, happy Sunday to you as well. So glad that you're making this a part of your day and a part of your new year. It is our hope and prayer that the next hour or so reconnects you with the God who created you, is with you by your side through the Holy Spirit, and gives gifts to all his people. It is a new year, a new month. We're kicking off a new message series. Let's take a look at the image that we'll be working with this month. It's called Word to the Wise. And our tagline, learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. We'll unpack that a little more in our message time, but we are in the midst of a month that will invite us to grow as humans and grow as children of God by reconnecting with the God who is with us. We'll unpack that a little more in our message time. I want to say thank you as we start a new year for all the ways in which you supported our food pantry over the course of the past year. We had a great year serving our community. Thank you for those of you who did our reverse advent boxes. That was mission accomplished. Uh, want to let you know our January item of the month, very appropriately, Kleenex and paper towels. I think we'll be needing Kleenex. Uh, I know some sickness going around, so it would be much appreciated to our food pantry clients to support them in that way. Thank you also for your support uh, for our holiday meals, both at Thanksgiving and at Christmas. Really, really successful way to serve our community. Thank you. And then finally, we are concluding now our Spread the Joy campaign. We've also been successful there. Thank you very much for your generosity, supporting our church, making some improvements on our campus. Thank you very much for supporting, uh, for supporting that effort. Friends, we'll join our voices in singing together our opening hymn, Hymn 55, if you'd like to sing along in our hymnal, or the words are on the screen. Angels, we have heard on high. Please rise as we sing.
Our order of worship this morning is found in our hymnals, Divine Service 2, the first setting. It's on page 158. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus, to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our maker and redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we ever may be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, beginning with verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Our epistle reading from the book of Colossians, the third chapter, beginning with verse 7. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all things, such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. All right, the congregation will please rise for the Alleluia. gospel this morning according to St. Matthew, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel." Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us together confess the faith that we share in our triune God. This morning we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to join me in making this statement of faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll sing together our message hymn, hymn 73, O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright.
Well, people loved by God, once again, good morning. morning. Wonderful to be with you this first day of 2023. It is a new year, and to me, a new year brings a sense of excitement, a sense of optimism. I'm not going to ask you to raise hands, but I am curious to get you thinking a little bit about how many of you have something in mind that you're hoping for in this next calendar year, or maybe a series of things that you want to see different in you in 2023. You can call them resolutions, changes, habits, whatever. I wonder if you've thought about that yet. And as much as those feel very secular and earthly because the Lord cares about you and is near to you, he cares about what you care about. If there's something that you hope for, something that you want to see different, he cares about that because he cares about you. And especially those things that have a greater impact, perhaps, on the world that he's created. For example, say what you hope for or your habits or resolution for the new year includes a better work-life balance or school-life balance. Say you want to be a more present grandparent or a more patient parent. Maybe there's a habit that you want to hopefully let lead you into better mental or physical health. When it makes sense that the Lord wants to help you realize that. Of course, because he cares about you. Which is why then I'm excited about our January message series. Again, the language we're calling is, words we're using is word to the wise. Learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. And I'm excited about this because I believe that this focus is going to help us help you to a better and stronger 2023. So today we're going to look at that story we read just a few moments ago from Matthew chapter 2. It's the story of the visit of the Magi to Jesus. And as much as we love singing the hymn, We Three Kings, think about it. We don't actually know that there's three. The Bible just tells us there's a plurality and that they bring three gifts. And calling them kings might be a little bit of a stretch. The Greek word used to describe these folks is magi. And here's how one Bible scholar puts it. He says this, The term magi loosely covered a wide variety of people interested in dreams, astrology, magic, books thought to contain mysterious references to the future, and the like. So probably not so much kings as they were wise and curious people. And don't miss the fact that Jesus really hasn't done much of anything yet. He's still just a baby. And already the world is taking notice. Classic preacher Charles Spurgeon puts it this way. It says, A stir begins as soon as Christ is born. He has not spoken a word. He has not wrought a miracle. He has not proclaimed a single doctrine. But when Jesus was born at the very first, while as yet hear nothing but infant cries, and can see nothing but infant weakness, still his influence upon the worlds is manifest. When Jesus was born, there came wise men from the east, and so on. There's infinite power even in an infant Savior. Isn't that a great line? So think about it this way. To get the attention of these wise, curious astrology-minded folks, what mechanism is God going to use to get their attention? A star. Isn't that perfect? I love it. He meets them in their own medium because that's who God is. And that's what God 
does. And remember, in doing so, he's fulfilling a, a promise, a prophecy made in the Old Testament book of Numbers, chapter 24, verse 17, that says this, A star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel. So track with me here. The star leads these wise, curious folks from the east to Jerusalem, where they then ask where this special child was born. And the ruler of the day, King Herod, Herod, consults his religious experts, the chief priests and teachers of the law, who tell him, and then in doing so tells the Magi, you got to go to Bethlehem. Yet here's what I want to especially dial into today and what I found so interesting. Take note in this moment, who goes to Bethlehem and who doesn't? The Magi, those open, curious, and inquisitive Magi go, but the religious leaders of the day pass. Sadly, these experts had the right information. They knew where to go and loved to tell other people the answer, but seemed personally uninterested in meeting Jesus themselves. Think about it. The shepherds, those religious outsiders, are told about the birth of Jesus, and they go. The magi are told about the birth of Jesus through a star, and then through these religious experts, they're told where to go, and they go. But the religious experts of the day stay home. So my question, why? What do we make of this? God ordains this. He makes this happen and reveals this to us in his word for a reason. What message does he have for us? I believe the contrast between the open, curious, and inquisitive magi, the contrast between those folks and those closed-minded, having-it-all-figured-out religious leaders is a contrast that we ought to pay attention to. One group has an attitude, a, a posture that is seeking out Jesus. The other has the head knowledge and just likes to tell other people what to do. Which leads then to the one message I want to share with you today as we kick off this series, and as we kick off 2023 together, and it's this. Never stop searching for what's true. We can learn so much from the wise men who are passionately seeking after Jesus, asking questions, and restless until they find him. <laughs> we can learn equally what not to do from those who know about Jesus, but care little about being near to him and worshiping him. For Christmas, my oldest daughter, Kate, got an iced coffee maker. She was very happy. And I'm happy because iced coffee that we make at home is remarkably more affordable than Starbucks or something's brewing. So she was very excited to open this, very excited Christmas morning to make it, so I had a decision to make. Am I going to read the instruction manual? It can't be that hard, right? So it literally, it was like a, it was like a, a point of like, am I going to do it or not? I opened it up, I saw the instruction manual, and I'm like, do I really need this, or is it more fun to just try it out? What do you think I did? I read the manual. Come on. Page one, number one, read all the instructions. I can't say I read all the instructions, but I will tell you, I did read the manual, and it helped. It's interesting how when you read the manual, you learn things about a product. I wanted to know, and it really helped. So I want to show you a continuum here 
on the screen. There's a sliding scale between 1 and 10. I'll put it up here for just a moment. You'll see uh, on the left is 0 or 1, 2, 3, and then on the far right is 7, 8, 9, 10. I want you to put yourself somewhere on that scale, and here's how I want you to think about it. Zero and one and two would put you more on the, where the chief priests and teachers of the law were. You're, you're settled, you feel like you've kind of got it all figured out when it comes to life with God. Ten, nine and ten would be more where the magi were. You're open, you're curious, you're seeking out more of Jesus. In essence, you're curious about reading a little more of the instruction manual. Where would you put you these days? And just to be clear, there are some elements of the faith for which we can be absolutely certain of. That Jesus is the Son of God. That by believing you can have life in his name. That he created this creation and invited you to be a part of it, that we messed it up with sin and that Jesus has come to make us right with God. We can know those things with certainty, but at the same time, live with a posture of wanting to know and grow in this, to stretch ourselves and to seek out more and more, just like the Magi, of getting closer and closer to the Lord. Now, wherever you would put you on that continuum, let me share with you an encouraging word. You are not a finished product, and no one expects you to be. You are growing, learning, you're changing, and that's good. That's a good thing. I'd like to think that I am a better husband, dad, pastor, son, and community member than I was five years ago, ten years ago, one year ago. It's a good thing. And I'm hoping in the next year, five years, ten years, I get to be an even better husband, dad, son, pastor, community member. And I'm certain that pressing into the Lord and seeking after him just like the Magi did is going to help me do that and help me get to exactly where I need to be. In fact, here's how one author in the New Testament, probably the greatest missionary the church has ever known, here's how he describes his own growth mindset. Here's the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3. He says this, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal. I'm not there yet. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. As in, I'm not a finished product. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Beautiful words. It's a new year. Happy New Year. Let's, with the heart and posture and mindset of the Magi, keep seeking Jesus. Amen? Amen. May that be true for each of us. Blessed New Year to you as we seek after the King. Friends, in a few moments, we'll turn our hearts to God in prayer. If you have a prayer request that you bring with you to worship today. We'd love to receive it as a church and then share it with our praying team. We have a team of folks that receive these prayer requests. If you have someone or something that you'd like a squadron of folks to pray for, put that on the prayer page. That can be dropped in the offering basket as it passes by. That bulletin tear off can communicate uh, that to us. That would be a blessing. Also here, we'll gather an offering. We'll put on the screen offering information, both for those of you who are in the room and those of you, again, joining us on our live stream. Let's gather an offering.
please rise as our offering is brought forward. Let us pray. Praise you, Almighty God, for revealing this moment in your scriptures to us. You reveal to us the story of the Magi, folks who are open, curious, and inquisitive, and seeking after you to be near to you and to worship you. Lord, may we take that same heart, attitude, and posture, and mindset. May we be a people who seek after you and are open to where you lead. Lord, in your mercy, be near, we pray, to those facing difficult moments in their lives. Pray for those who face medical uncertainty, those who face mental, emotional, relational, financial challenges. Be near to them, we pray. We pray, Almighty God, that they would seek after you, and as they seek after you, you find them and give them strength and peace, joy, life in Jesus. Lord, we pray also that you'd work healing in their bodies and in their lives and relationships. Be near to them, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, pray this day, Lord, as we embark on a new year. Lord, give us your heart, your mindset, your attitude and posture. Pray, Almighty, Almighty God, that we may be a compassionate, serving people that see the needs and hurts of others and seek to meet them. Bless us, Lord, in this endeavor. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Finally, Father, we pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this often in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you.
please rise. And now may this heavenly gift, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, may it strengthen you and preserve you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in God's peace. Amen. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine down upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. We'll join our voices in singing together our closing hymn, hymn 47. Now sing we, now rejoice. peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.